Also, I will talk about the differences between perfect competition and monopoly. We will be talking about the features that each one of them has. So, for example, uh, we have a green table on your book. Uh, we will explain it right now on the PowerPoint. So please also, if you may open your books to page 248 and 249 and start to jot down notes. We will start with page 248 and we are talking about the features of a perfect competition and how it affects the market. When I'm talking about perfect competition, the first thing that I know is we have large number of firms competing with each other. Now, it means each firm produces only a small share of the total market supply, whereas in a monopoly, it is producing a very large number uh, uh, of the total market supply, okay, because it is the only one. Now, the second feature would be uh, all of the firms have perfect knowledge about what they're doing because they have the same access uh, to the suppliers, uh, they have the same uh, technical knowledge, and uh, they are facing the same problems if people stop buying, they stop buying from everyone, okay? So they are all the same, mainly. Now, the firms, since uh, have, who competes? Firms that are producing similar products. When I'm talking about similar products and they are not differentiated, we call this a homogeneous products, okay? As we said before, we will repeat it again. When I'm talking about competition, I consider them price takers. They take the price as it is in the market because if I increase the price, I'm competing with thousands of firms. If I increase the price, people will stop buying from me and they will go to the other competitors. Um, the fifth one and the last one would be profits will attract new firms into the market. So, for example, didn't we say before that there will be no barriers of entry? So if I know, I don't have a firm, but I know that producing that particular product is causing a lot of profits to these firms that are competing with each other, I would definitely, if I have the capital or the money, I would definitely want to enter the market and start producing similar products in order to make profits. Now let's move on to the other page, to the next page, page 249, and have a look at your green table on your book, which we will be talking about features of pure monopoly. Now when I'm talking about the features of pure monopoly, mono, guys remember mono, it means one. So I have only one firm supplying the market with that particular product. So in other words, this monopoly, this firm, it is controlling the market supply of the product. It is controlling the price of the product as well. Okay? Uh, the firm in that point, it would be considered, this is the second feature, a price maker because they set the price that they want. Okay, other than they setting the price that they want, they can raise the price and people will still buy because they have no other choice. Okay, here, the third one, it is that they will be having barriers of entry, whether they were natural or artificial. Okay, and we will talk about this later on in more uh, details. They would not want any new firm to enter the market and compete with them because automatically when competition occurs, automatically the prices will decrease. Okay, since they are the price makers and since they are the only ones producing that particular product, we say that they are making abnormal, and this is the last feature, abnormal profits. When I'm talking about abnormal profits, it means they are making excess profits. Okay, now um, here also uh, I will be talking about uh, the features of uh, a competitive markets and mainly a perfect competition, so not monopolistic competition, it's the perfect competition. Here there will be no, uh, no price competition and no non-price competition between firms. 
Why? Because when I'm talking about perfect competition, the firms, remember, they are considered to be price takers and they are producing identical or homogeneous products. So, for example, there will be no point in a firm in a perfect competitive market to advertise its products. Okay? Because all of them are producing the same thing. This is perfect competition. Please, guys, not monopolistic competition. Okay, a perfectly competitive market has the following characteristics now. This also you can find it, you guys, in your book on page 249, in the last paragraph. Okay, here it tells us there are many, many buyers and sellers in the market. And each company is making a similar product. Please, you have to know this term. Instead, start using homogeneous products. Okay, buyers and sellers have access to perfect information about price. Remember, we said that one before when I was talking about the green table. And the second point, we said all firms have access to the same knowledge. So all firms supplying the market have perfect knowledge. This is it. Buyers and sellers have, uh, there are no transaction costs. There are no barriers to entry or exit from the market and some examples would be regarding a perfectly competitive market agriculture in this example i cannot say this potato is better than that potato and so on they are very similar products do you ever see an advertisement about um, agricultural products it doesn't make sense this is why they do not need to advertise Tomatoes all over, they all taste the same, okay? Foreign exchange markets and online shopping as well. These are uh, to be considered perfect competition examples. Now, why do companies advertise? When will they advertise? When we have mainly monopolistic competition or it's an oligopoly, okay? What they would do is, as we said before, they, we advertise so people will know about the product. So when people know about the product and they try it and they like it, this is creating a powerful brand image of that particular product. And when we have a powerful brand image, it automatically will create brand loyalty. Brand loyalty, it means people will keep on buying that same product. So repeated purchases of the product okay so no matter what happens to the price also i will keep on buying it because i am loyal to that shampoo as i told you before i will keep on using l'oreal no matter what it protects sales and market share uh, customers are willing to pay more for the brand i just told you even if the price increases i will continue buying it customers continue to buy the brand uh, if the producer increases its price over rival products. So as you can see, these two points are the same mainly. Okay? And it can, sorry, it can create, it can reduce competition. Now, when we advertise, when we advertise, this is all I need, uh, what I need from you. I need you to know that advertising increases the demand of the product. So people will be willing to demand more. Remember in unit two we took, if demand increases, and advertisement was one of the reasons, our demand curve will shift to the right. So people will be buying more. I have a new equilibrium. <clears throat> this new equilibrium, it means prices will increase and also, look, this is the old equilibrium, the quantity demanded increases as well. Let's talk about monopolistic competition, which, remember, when I'm talking about the scale, here I have perfect competition, here I have monopolistic competition, I have oligopoly, so they're less competitive, and then on the other extreme, I have monopoly. Now, I am absolutely done with perfect competition, and I said that they do not need to advertise, and an example would be agricultural products. Let's talk about examples of monopolistic competition. It's the restaurant business, hotels, uh, general specialist retailing. So, for example, uh, what are they doing here? Um, department stores selling clothes. 
Okay, uh, hairdressers, these are considered to be consumer services. Now, on page 249, features of competitive market, they do that in three different ways, and we will be discussing them in details from page uh, 250, 251. The three uh, strategies, the three features would be competitive pricing strategies, and we will be talking here about either destruction pricing, and I will explain it in a bit, price wars, or price leadership. The second point would be product differentiation. And finally, we will be talking about small numbers, small numbers of small numbers of firms competition. Let us start with the competitive pricing strategies. So, in, right now, I will explain the first one. Competitive pricing strategies, as we said before, I have destruction or predatory pricing. Destruction pricing, remember it. It means I want to destroy my competitor. How can I destroy my competitor? So even if I want to sell my product at a price lower than how much it costs me to produce it, which means I am losing, but I know that this strategy will make my competitor lose, I am willing to do that. So well, let's say, let me give you an example. Um, for farming, let's say, uh, I'm talking about the tomatoes. Okay, in order to plant the tomatoes, irrigate the tomatoes, uh, pay the farmers, and so on. For every kilo, it is costing me as a farmer five dirhams. So logically, if I want to make profits, I would sell it for more than five. But here, when I'm talking about destruction or predatory pricing, it means it costs me five dirhams, but if it means that I will destroy my competitor, I would sell it for less than five, even if I will lose. So as you can see, it is undercutting the prices of rival firms in an attempt to drive them out of the business. Later on, when they are out of the business, what will I do? I will increase my prices again. Okay? Price war. Price war, yani they're fighting with each other. How are they fighting these firms? By decreasing their prices. So when each firm tries to undercut the price of its rival, Remember, this is very good for us as consumers because we would be capable of buying these products at a lower price. Then I have something called uh, follow the leader pricing, which means I'm talking about price leadership. Okay, so follow the leader. This is the third point. It's a matching strategy that helps to avoid damaging price, um, price wars in competitive markets. It involves each firm in the market to um, in market setting its price or prices equal to those of their closest rivals. So they try to sell, let's say, um, Pepsi, for example, it is the price leadership. If whatever the price they set for their soft drink, you would find Coca-Cola and other soft drink companies, what are they doing? They are imitating them and they are following the pricing strategies that they are using. Okay, so we are done with the first feature of a competitive market. Now let's move on to the second feature, which is product differentiation. Product differentiation, it's from supplying very similar products to each other, but they will make their product a bit different. They will differentiate their product. How would they do this differentiation? Look at this example here. All of them mainly, uh, they are... Um, cereal right but as you can see you have different brands of cereals uh, they have different packaging of the cereal box uh, probably they have different um, after uh, sales care which is the customer service and an example would be other than the cereal it could be all the cleaning detergents so for instance our detergent our cleaning detergent whitens the clothes more it is the best in the market it washes whiter than the white blah 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 Okay, so they try to differentiate their product a little bit. Why? In order to persuade the buyers to buy their product and that the product is the superior product in the market. So right now we are done with the second feature. Let's move on to the uh,
Now, this is the third market structure. It's called oligopoly. When I'm talking about oligopolies, it means I have small number of firms. Now, um, oligopolies usually, um, the market supply is dominated by a small number of very large firms. So, for example, when you hear about Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they are dominating the market when it comes to soft drinks. Um, another example would be Boeing and Airbus. They dominate the global market supply of passenger aircrafts. Now, one common example that you all know about would be, for example, Apple and Android. Um, it's the store for smartphones, or also I can be talking about Mac or um, Microsoft. These are the operating systems for computers. Now, let's see what are the features that make up this competitive market. It's not very competitive since we're talking about few number of firms, but they are very large firms supplying this product. Sometimes these firms, they create something called a cartel with each other. Why? Because they want to do something called collusion. And collusion, or when companies collude together, it means they are working together in order to limit competition. So all of them would decide, for instance, to decrease their prices in order to um, create barriers of entry for new firms. Okay? And later on, they can increase their prices again. They would prefer staying limited in amount as firms because they will still be in control of the prices. Now, what are the features of uh, oligopoly in this market structure? Uh, there will be vigorous price competition and non-price competition between these firms that are supplying the products to the market. So since there is a small number of firms, of very um, important or firms that dominate the market, they will always compete with each other. They would want to increase their own market share and their own customer base. Also, when we're talking about competition between these firms, they will use different pricing strategies. These pricing strategies, it means also they want to increase their customer base. They try to make their products differentiated. They want to attract more customers in order to increase their revenues and therefore their profits. Okay? Now, sometimes companies that are unable to compete with these small number uh, of firms, they will be forced to shut down or to close. This was oligopoly. You can find it on your book on page 251. And now I will show you the example we discuss we have as we said before Windows and Apple these two they dominate the market for the computer operating system now uh, this would be um, before we start with the new uh, chapter this would be an activity on page 252 okay we will discuss it with each other we will solve it with each other and then correct it with each other now I will start the new section which is 3.5